Hi, welcome to this lecture of Two-Phase Flow. My name is Min Chang Li. I'm currently a faculty at the Department of Power Mechanical Engineering in National Tsinghua University. Per the request from the university, I'm recording and sharing this series of lecturing for NTHU Open Courseware. The topic of this lecture is the weighting phenomena and contact angle of the liquid, vapor, and solid interfaces. The content of this lecture material is based on the book Liquid Vapor Phase Change Phenomena, authored by Professor Carey. This figure shows a contact point between three phases of solid, liquid, and vapor. Sigma is the interfacial tension between each two of those three phases. At equilibrium, a force balance at the contact point of these three phases leads to the result of Young's equation. The vertical force sigma LV times sine theta is usually negligible considering the modulus of elasticity for most solid is high. The Young's equation can also be derived from a thermodynamics approach. The change of the Helmholtz free energy versus a change of the surface area of the solid covered by the liquid equals the change on the surface energies as shown by equation 11. For a system held at constant volume and temperature, thermodynamics requires that the free energy must be a minimum at equilibrium. Therefore, partial F partial ASL equals zero for the system at equilibrium, and the resulted equation is just identical to the Young's equation that was derived from force balance. Here we define a new parameter called the spreading coefficient. For a droplet on the solid surface as shown here in the figure, equation 3.11 can be rewritten in terms of spreading coefficient. For a surface that is fully weighted by the liquid, the counter angle is zero, and the spreading coefficient represents the change of the free energy corresponding to the change of ASL. In general, for a droplet on the solid surface at equilibrium, the spreading coefficient is given by equation 14. Since the maximum value of cosine theta is one, and the surface tension is a positive value. In theory, the maximum possible value for the spreading coefficient is zero. A positive value of the spreading coefficient indicates the liquid will spontaneously spread into a thin film on the solid surface. Equation 25 is a useful correlation for determining the interfacial tension of two immiscible liquids. Following these discussions, the contact angle can be presented with this set of equations here. Notice that for a sigma LG less than sigma SGD, cosine theta must be one. This is corresponding to the maximum value of the spreading coefficient as discussed in the previous slide. This figure on the right shows the measure the values of contact angle for various liquids on Teflon surface. Sigma SGD can be obtained from this figure where the intersection of the curve with the horizontal axis at cosine theta equals one. This value is called the critical surface tension of the solid. For example, from this figure, the critical surface tension of Teflon is around 18 millinewton per meter. Another interesting example is the overflow of liquid helium from a Dewar flask. The surface tension of liquid helium is on the order of 0.1 to 1 millinewton per meter. The surface free energy of glass and the metals is on the order of 100 to 1000 millinewton per meter. So there is a strong tendency for the liquid helium to spread on the surface and climb on the wall of the flask against the gravity. After flowing over the rim of the flask, the thin liquid helium film keeps spreading on the outer surface of the flask and then evaporates and drips off the bottom. 
Here we introduce another important concept associated with the spread of thin liquid film on a solid surface, the disjoining pressure. Considering the condition shown by this figure, the liquid fully weights the solid surface. A hemispherical container with a vapor bubble trapped inside is brought into close proximity to the solid surface. A thin liquid layer with a thickness of delta is maintained between the vapor and the solid surfaces. In the experiment, the vapor bubble pressure, Pb, is controlled. Since the liquid vapor interface is flat, Pb must balance the liquid pressure in the thin liquid film, Pf. If the liquid film is thick enough, the pressure in the liquid film equals the ambient pressure in the liquid, PL. However, if the liquid film thickness is very small, the pressure inside the bubble must balance the ambient liquid pressure, PL, and the attractive forces between the liquid molecules and the solid surface. Otherwise, the film gets thicker due to the attraction forces of the liquid towards the solid since the solid surface likes to be weighted by this liquid. This works as if the pressure in the liquid layer were reduced below the ambient pressure PL by an amount of P disjoining. By sign convention, if the affinity of the liquid for the solid draws liquid into the film, the disjoining pressure is taken to be negative. Therefore, Pf equals Pb, and Pb equals Pl minus Pd, where Pd is called the disjoining pressure. Note it again that the disjoining pressure Pd is defined in the way that for a solid surface to liquid combination, that the solid tends to attract the liquid, the value of Pd is negative. In other words, for these circumstances, the pressure in the bubble and therefore the pressure in the thin film, Pf, is greater than the pressure of the ambient liquid pressure, Pl. Since the attractive forces between liquid molecules and the solid surface decreases with increasing the distance of liquid molecules away from the solid surface, the required disjoining pressure difference to overcome this attractive force will decrease with increasing the thickness of the liquid film. This tendency could be approximated by a relation like equation 46. The disjoining pressure effect can also greatly affect the formation of a thin liquid film on vertical plates when the liquid weights the solid surface very well. In this case, Instead of forming a finite contact angle, a very thin liquid film may form on the vertical plate above the intrinsic meniscus. The location of the triple contact point for the intrinsic meniscus Z equals Z0 can be estimated by using the Young-Laplace equation and derivations that we have discussed in lecture two. The combination of the intrinsic meniscus and the thin liquid film above it is called extended meniscus. With a derivation based on the disjoining pressure, gravity, and the thickness of the film, delta, a relation for predicting the variation of the liquid film thickness versus Z can be obtained. In practice, the baseline Z0 of this model is approximated with Z equals zero, and the thickness of the liquid film corresponds to Z at zero is infinity. Therefore, the first term in equation 49 is eliminated, and a profile of delta versus Z can be determined. This thickness profile of the thin film is then added above the intrinsic meniscus from Z equals Z0 to complete the extended meniscus. 
it should be also noted that since heat transfer is usually very effective across the thin liquid film, the estimation of the extended meniscus is greatly important to heat transfer analysis with the liquid and the vapor phase change. To further illustrate the importance and the significance of the extended meniscus and disjoining pressure, here we share an example from the textbook. The important conclusions are that the absolute value of disjoining pressure increases significantly with decreasing the liquid film thickness. And the thin liquid film thickness on a vertical plate could be on the order of several tens of microns at a location of 10 cm above the surface of the bulk liquid. The disjoining pressure also affects the formation and the growth of liquid droplet and a bubble on the surface of solid in the case of heterogeneous nucleations. This will be discussed in later lectures. Another interesting phenomenon of contact angle and the interfaces is that the contact angle may change depending on the interface is advancing or receding. For example, inserting a solid slab into a liquid, the contact angle theta A is called the advancing contact angle. If the slab is moved vertically upward after immersed in the liquid, the contact angle is called the receding contact angle theta R. If this immersing and pull-off process is repeated several times, ideally, the advancing contact angle should be the same as the receding contact angle, since the surface properties of the contact point will be the same for removing the slab in either direction. However, for most systems, theta A and theta R will not be equal. This phenomena is called contact angle hysteresis. The main reasons cause this contact angle hysteresis include the surface inhomogeneity, the surface roughness, and the impurities on the surface. Considering a solid surface with alternate weighting and non-weighting surface properties to the liquid, when the contact angle is advancing, according to the Young-Laplace equation, there will be a locally pressure difference inside the liquid in the vicinity of the contact point as shown in figure A, while the liquid front moves to location 2. This pressure difference near the contact point serves as a pump to deliver liquid from the higher pressure region to the lower pressure region at the contact point. This makes the contact line move rapidly across the surface of the strongly weighted material. This means that if the advancing motion is stopped, the contact angle of the poorly weighted surface theta A is more likely to be established. However, for the receding liquid front on the same solid surface to position 2 as shown in figure B, based on the same argument, the liquid tends to flow away from the contact line region. If the bulk motion of the liquid front stops here, the contact angle will be a smaller value at that corresponds to the weighted surface. Therefore, theta r is different from theta a. The contact angle hysteresis could also be resulted from the surface roughness of the solid. On these two figures shown here, the solid surface and liquid combination has an intrinsic contact angle theta. However, when the contact line is advancing and moving on the descending portion of the surface, the apparent contact angle theta A is greater than theta. The contact line moves rapidly on the portion of the surface with an upward slope and the local curvature of the liquid vapor interface leads to a pressure difference in the liquid that tends to move liquid more effectively 
from the bulk portion to the contact point. In consequence, if the advancing of the contact line stops, the apparent contact angle in reference to the horizontal line is more likely theta a. Following the same reasoning as described in the previous slide in here, for the receding condition, the apparent contact angle will be theta r, which is smaller than theta and theta a. From force balance between the surface tension and the gravity, the contact angles and the curvatures of a liquid droplet on a vertical or inclined surface and a liquid column inside a small tube can be estimated. Let's summarize this lecture. We introduced the definition of a contact angle and derived a relation between the contact angle and the surface tension or surface energies of solid, liquid, and the vapor phases. We further introduced the concept of the disjoining pressure and its significance on the formation of thin liquid film between solid and the vapor. Finally, the differences and the reasons between the advancing and the receding contact angles are explained.